So let's talk about this boiler first. This boiler is for uh, 300,000 BTUs and it's for six apartments. And a boiler, what it does is gonna, this one is leaking, so we're gonna replace it in a few minutes. But this boiler has some burners at the bottom and it's gonna warm up some water and then it's gonna circulate it through, a, through the whole building. And while it passes through pipes, it's gonna give out some heat. Uh, so the uh, typical pr working pressure of these boilers are uh, 12 pounds or a little bit more. If you have a two, three floors, the, the pounds, the pressure is gonna be a little bit bigger than 12. It could be 15, 18 or whatever, but that's another subject. And uh, uh, so if for any reason, if the feeding valve doesn't work and it allows more water, more than uh, 12 and it keeps building the pressure uh, this valve is going to open when it reaches 30 pounds of pressure and it's going to protect the pipes it's going to protect the boiler and the whole system because pressure hurts the whole system uh, this is not like a water heater it's not going to open on temperature like a water heater and we're going to talk about that since this valve is only for pressure, the boiler has other safety devices like the low limit and the high limit and other sensors to open up and kill the power to the unit. So this is a tag for this boiler. Uh, the model number is M3 and uh, the size is three quarter and it's set to 30 pounds of pressure. This boiler is uh, 300,000 BTUs, so the rating for your valve should be it should be bigger than the actual ratings of the boiler. Otherwise, you wouldn't be protecting it. Let's talk about safety. This downpipe, the discharge pipe, is wrong. It's, it's supposed to be longer. It's supposed to be uh, within six inches from the floor and the end of the pipe. So this should be longer. That's so if it's activated while you are around, it doesn't burn you, doesn't burn your uh, your eyes or your face or whatever. So that's why it has to be that low. Uh, this, this pipe has threads. You have to remove them and you have to cut the threads so nobody puts a plug or a hose. If, if you put a plug, it's going to explode in you because you never know when it's building the pressure. And if you put a hose, you never know when it's leaking because the water is going to the drain. This valve in this boiler is constantly leaking. So I try to reset it a few times. Sometimes there's debris in the diaphragm inside their spring and a diaphragm that when it reaches the temperature, it's gonna open, it's spring loaded. So watch, I'm gonna pull it and see all that water. Of course, you have to be careful that's scorching hot water. Uh, this, this one, it's 180 degrees because it's a boiler. Can you see the pressure reads 178 degrees? And then after you exercise the valve, just make sure tap it lightly, just so it sits properly. But this one is beyond tapping because now it's been leaking for two days. So now we're gonna replace it. So we're gonna replace this one. On this boiler, we're gonna turn the boiler off. Now remember, there's pressure in this tank, even though the pressure in this tank is 12 to 18, that's not too much. But we're gonna relieve the pressure by activating your valve. So look at that, it's spitting some water. So we're gonna leave it on until no water is coming out. We're gonna shut all the main supplies. Since uh, we have all the water pressure to the upper apartments, we're gonna shut the water off to each apartment because when you open the system, the water wants to go down to where you open the system. So we're gonna turn off all four apartments so we don't lose the water from each apartment. So when I turn this on, when I 
open up like that, there's not much water pressure. What's up? Hey, so this, it's a bad leak, huh? Not, not a good leak. <laughs> <laughs> no good leak. No good leak? Okay, I'm like, why is it dripping water? So now we're gonna replace it. We're gonna start from the opposite end of the valve. So we're gonna start with the down pipe. Um, remember when you have two pipes, you have to protect this one. So the bigger wrench goes on the 90 degree. And then the smaller wrench goes in the pipe that is going to be removed. So we're gonna go Like that to remove. Now since we're gonna remove the elbow, we have to protect this. So the bigger pipe goes on this pipe. Well at this at this point, we can remove both pieces. So I'm just gonna remove it from here. So now I'm gonna remove the elbow and this stub at the same time. I don't have to undo it because we're gonna reduce it. So it's pretty easy. So now to remove the valve, we have to protect this pipe and then with a smaller wrench, look at that. At this point, we don't supposed to have any pressure or at least not that much, but just be careful. And don't take it all the way out, just lift it a little bit. But if it, if it had any pressure, it would come out of that out of the seam, out of the pipe here. So I think we're good. I don't know if you see, but it's a little bit rusted inside. We're gonna apply Teflon tape and you have to apply the tape and the paste clockwise. And then before you put the new one, remember you have to make sure it has the same specifications as the other one. So now we're gonna thread it. We don't have that much pressure, but we have to have at least 12 pounds of pressure. And it seems like we have 12 pounds of pressure, so we're gonna turn the system on. At this point, the air that came into the system, the air scooper is supposed to remove it, but we don't have one here. Don't forget to turn everything you turn off. Otherwise, they'll call you in the middle of the night that they don't have heat. Now we're gonna turn it on. It's gonna go through safeties and then it's gonna turn on. So now you know a lot about TP relief valves. So just be safe. Uh, do whatever you're supposed to do. So uh, don't forget to press that button. Please like this video if it was useful to you and see you next video. Thank you so much. Have a great day.